So today we're going to talk about how to stay positive. And I got to tell you, one of my mentors, Dan Sullivan, says your number one job as an entrepreneur is to protect your personal confidence. And so I could not agree with that more. Think about it. Our job as entrepreneurs, we make money with our brain and your brain is a machine that basically produces cash. And if you don't take care of this machine, okay, if you don't uh, lube it up with the right things and put the right things in it and shield it from the bad, you are basically hitting your best asset with a baseball bat every single day. And so today we're going to talk about how I stay positive. Uh, I've been, uh, my wife calls me Mr. Happy. <laughs> uh, but I got to tell you, some days I've got bad days. And sometimes I've gone into a spiral where I wasn't positive. And so I've got to share my experience of, of how I turn that around. And I use that to my advantage because all this comes back to is how you can make a crap load of money wholesaling real estate and having a ton of fun doing it without overworking yourself. So here are my tips on how to stay positive. And so the number one thing that I think that you've got to think about is number one, challenging yourself and winning at least a little bit every single day. And one of the ways that you can do this is to change your circle of influence. I got to tell you, I've heard uh, John Maxwell say this. I've heard Jim Rohn say this. But your five closest friends or reference groups uh, are going to be basically uh, the, the, the biggest factors of change in your life. And if you're growing, you're most likely going to be happy and positive. And if you're not, you're going to start moving backwards. And so I know this is all about changing and growing and winning, but the circle of influence is probably the most powerful. I want to tell you a quick story. So uh, I have two daughters and uh, they have this one uh, mutual friend who's super, super, super sweet girl. And she uh, had not got, she's the uh, kind of in the, in between the age of my uh, two daughters. And long story short, my oldest daughter got her permit and was driving and then subsequently got her license. Now, the other girl who they were friends with was now of permit age and did not get her learner's permit. And so now she was 16 and now she's 17. And still the time had come where she is 17 years old and didn't get her learning per, uh, permit or her uh, driver's license. And yet my daughter, my older one, now has a driver's license and is driving everywhere. Now think about it. We've got one person who's got their driver's license, and now my younger daughter does not have their driver's license or their permit, uh, and nor does my daughter's friends, her friend. Now uh, my older daughter asked <laughs> uh, their, their friend, "Hey, how come you don't get your driver's permit?" And she's like, "Yeah, I don't know. You know, I'm not really in the mood to to do this." Yeah, they're all hanging out. Interesting enough, my youngest daughter just turned 15 and a half. And in California, uh, you now get your learner's permit. And she got her learner's permit and is now driving all over town instantaneously. Okay. This is the crazy thing. Now, now my daughter's friend who's a superstar now is watching my older daughter and my younger daughter. One has her permit and the other one's got her driver's license. Now she's watching them and now feels uncomfortable. Okay, uncomfortable because now she is the odd person out. Immediately after my younger one gets her permit, she's 16, uh, the older one who's like 17 and a half now gets her driver's license, passed it, and is now driving all over town. By the way, totally sweet girl, right? But the interesting thing was I guarantee you that this was a joyful experience for my daughter's friends, right? They got uncomfortable. Their reference group had their license and their permit, and they said, you know what? I feel uncomfortable. I'm going to go do this. They went and, and, and got the test passed and is driving around, and boom, there is a source of happiness. So my, my recommendation to you is find a way to upgrade your circle today. Get uncomfortable because you're upgrading your circle. You're going to have people around you who are making more money, doing better things. They're in better shape. They're doing all kinds of things where you're like, I got to be doing this. And you'll have short-term discomfort, but long-term gain, which is going to have a very, very positive outlook. It's also going to let you know what's possible. Next thing, keep promises to yourself. You can't control a lot of things, but you can uh, control many. 
And so I love to focus on the things that where they are with that are within my control. If you're trying to lose uh, weight, you can't necessarily control the pace of that, but you can control if you exercise. Uh, you can't control uh, if you have a six pack tomorrow, but you can control whether you're going to prep your meal today. You can't control whether you're going to get a hundred thousand dollar deal this week, okay? But you can control you sending out marketing every single Monday for the next six weeks and seeing what happens, right? You can't control whether a seller says yes, but you can make an offer to every single lead, even if it's freezing cold, if it comes into your world. And so my recommendation is keep some promises to yourself. Don't make a million, but keep a promise to yourself that you wanna keep every single day and focus on it and keep winning. By the way, there's a phenomenal app I'm gonna recommend to you. Um, it's uh, They got a free version, a paid version, but check out the productive app where basically you can kind of put in some of your habits and check them off every day. We call these mini promises, right? Check out the productive app. Uh, there's a free version, a paid version, but check it out. It is just awesome. I love it. I've got it on my phone. Next on how to stay positive is, uh, I think discontentment is very, very good uh, in a lot of ways, right? You are striving towards something. You've got purpose. You are moving in the direction, but it also can be really depressing when you can see how far that you have to go. So you have to far focus on the progress and not the goal, right? Let's say that you're trying to get your business to $150,000 a month and you've been doing, you know, 15, $20,000 a month where I would say is, Hey, you know, at first I would focus on getting that business to $30,000 a month before I was worrying about to get to a hundred. I would first worry about maybe eliminating all the marketing channels that I had, right? And before I'm going to focus on adding eight, right? And so as you go and as you grow, you may not get to, to your goal as fast as you want. And that can be very, 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 very disconcerting. And so one of the things that I like to do whenever I'm feeling down is, this is something I also learned from Dan Sullivan, is write down all the things that you have uh, made progress in. And that's really, really, really going to build your confidence. All right. Next thing is uh, you got to make sure you talk to yourself. Now I talk to myself in the shower. I talk to myself when I'm walking around in my house. I have pretend conversations with myself all the time. Don't believe me? Just ask my family. <laughs> but they, my family calls it uh, uh, Toddland. But uh, I'm constantly talking to myself in uh, a good way. As a matter of fact, my, um, my nickname for myself uh, to my kids is Beast Mode Dad. Um, when I'm like really, really focusing or trying to make stuff happen, I'm like, I'm going beast mode dad. And that's one of the things that I do about, uh, talking to myself when I'm in the gym and I'm lifting and, uh, I'm like having a really good workout or I'm like trying to get next set. I'm like beast mode dad, beast mode dad. I know it's completely cheesy and I cannot believe that I just said that on this podcast, but since I love you and hopefully you love me, we can trust each other. <laughs> but, um, I always talk to myself and, and reinforce, uh, positive thoughts. Even if you don't believe it, keep saying it, keep saying it. And so all of my kids are swimmers and they also race. And I'm always like, Hey, um, you get stronger as the race goes on. You get stronger as the race goes on. You outwork everybody. You love the pain. You love the pain. You love the pain. You love the pain. And uh, my kids like, can't stand me for this when I say it. But, uh, one time my son were in the car and uh, they were doing a really, really, really hard set in the pool. And I was like, oh, and by the way, this is like after years of telling me like, Todd, I mean, dad, like enough about saying, I love the pain. <laughs> uh, my son who's doing a really, really, really hard set. He's like, yeah, we're doing this really hard set. And he's like, I, well, I was swimming it. I said, I love the pain in my brain. And I was like, oh my gosh, I was the proudest dad in the world. And so talk to yourself, say positive things, because if you say it enough time, your brain will believe it. Uh, I'm going to talk about something that I'm really passionate. By the way, no judgments. But at one point, uh, I would say I had an unhealthy relationship with uh, alcohol. It wasn't like an alcoholic or anything, but I've talked about this many, many times where, uh, you know, I just I was drinking too much and too often, right? I was having like two glasses of wine every single night, like two healthy glasses. And one of the things that I uh, I realized was that I became like, dependent on this, not as like an alcoholic would, which by the way, like no judgment if you are, right? But in terms of emotionally, right? And also to relieve stress and anxiety, right? So if you have a stressful day and you're using wine to, or alcohol or beer or shots or whatever that is, 
uh, you are using that to unwind, right? And to uh, change the chemicals in your brain and to use that to relax. And what happens is, is that when you come off the alcohol, right, your anxiety goes up and therefore lowering your mood. Ask me how I know this. <laughs> and one day I woke up and I had a little bit of like depression, anxiety the night after uh, I drank. And by the way, the night before I had a great time. I was out, I got a great dinner with my wife. The alcohol felt great. We Ubered home. The morning I woke up, I had that anxiety and depression. And I'm like, uh-uh, I hate this. I'm done. I'm never drinking again. And that was like six years ago. And so look, everything I give you in this podcast, take what you like, throw away what you don't. I'm not telling you got to stop drinking. Not saying that you're an alcoholic if you're listening to this. I'm not saying you even abuse alcohol. But for me, I just got to tell you, it wasn't doing any good in my life. And I will tell you, there's a fact that there's definitely a rebound effect of depression, anxiety when it comes to alcohol. Not when you drink it. Of course, it feels great, right? Who does not love a good buzz, right? But I'm talking about the long-term effects. All right, next one. Let's talk about make one unreasonable request per day. I want you to start taking some chances. I want you to think of something completely unreasonable, okay, for you to ask somebody every single day. And this one is awesome. I taught it uh, to uh, my kids and uh, it's just awesome. And so now my oldest one is shopping for a car. And I said, hey, she, by the way, she loves to shop at garage sales and flip it and sell that stuff on eBay. I said, every time we are uh, at a garage sale, I want you to ask somebody if they have a car that they are selling. Okay. Uh, and, uh, if someone is selling a car, let's say someone's older and selling their car cause they can't drive. I was like, Hey, why don't you ask them if maybe you could trade the car and you could run some errands for them. Right. That's a quote unquote, unreasonable request. Uh, my son, you know, he's, uh, he loves to work with his hands. I was like, Hey, why don't you ask the neighbor if you could do a big project for him? Right. And so he's like, Oh my God, that's so scary. So to him, that's unreasonable, but you know, make an unreasonable request, right? Go to maybe a partner who's working in your market and say, hey, let me do a deal with you or let me take one of your properties and give me 30% of the deal. I, I don't know what it is for you, right? Ask your vend one of your vendors if they could uh, uh, lay out all the money for you for a year, <laughs> right? And you pay them a very, very low interest for carrying the money. Find someone who can uh, be an advisor on your board <laughs> and work for a portion of the profit of your company. Right? Ask someone to invest in your business for an 8% return on their money a year with no personal guarantee. Make an unreasonable request. I don't care what it is, but guess what? If you make an unreasonable request, one out of three is probably going to uh, get accepted. Someone's going to say yes. All right. And so that's going to make you really, really positive. Next thing is help somebody. Helping somebody uh, is really, really going to increase your, uh, your, your mood. Do something that is unexpected. Uh, pay for somebody to uh, do a sport if they can't afford it. If you are a parent, uh, buy some, uh, give some blankets to a homeless person, uh, uh, do something really, really nice for a kid without a dad, take him to a baseball game. I don't care what it is, but do something to really, really help something that's out of your comfort zone. And I'm telling you, that is going to uh, really, really put you in a positive mood. So here are some of the things that I do. Again, take what you like, throw away what you don't, Right? Let me know what you think. If you've got something to help you stay positive, do me a favor, leave a um, a note in the comments if you're watching this on YouTube or send an email. Quick reminder, the podcast uh, has been previously published twice a week. We are moving to once a week, and you're also going to get another email newsletter from me once a week. You can get all kinds of tips and tricks for wholesaling. You're going to still hear from me, and you're also going to hear from Bobby Big Deal. Bobby Big Deal actually is somebody who uses my methods and my techniques. Super, super private person, uh, and that is a pseudonym, but you got to listen to this guy. He's a total savage. It's going to increase your deal size if I have anything to do with it. So look out in the newsletter. You're going to hear from Bobby Big Deal and from me and maybe from a few other people, but I can't wait for it. So keep an eye out for that. If you're not getting it already, don't forget to head over to nextlevelwholesaling.com. Take the assessment and I will talk to you on the next episode.